Good morning. <laughs> May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that you may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God, let the people praise you. Let the nation be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let the peoples praise you. The earth is yielded to increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Hola, buenos días. Hoy leo de Salmos 67. Al director musical, acompáñense con instrumentos de cuerda, Salmo Cántico. Dios tenga piedad de nosotros y nos bendiga. Dios haga resplandecer su rostro sobre nosotros. Selah. Para que en la tierra sea conocido tu camino y en todas las naciones tu salvación. Que te alaben, oh Dios, los pueblos. Que todos los pueblos te alaben. Alégrense y canten con júbilo las naciones, porque tú las juzgas con rectitud y guías a las naciones de la tierra. Selah. Que te alaben, oh Dios, los pueblos. Que todos los pueblos te alaben. La tierra dará entonces su fruto, y Dios nuestro Dios nos bendecirá. Dios nos bendecirá, y le temanán todos los confines de la tierra. Our great God and Father, we cry out to you, asking that you would give ear to us, for you are our shepherd. You are our high and exalted King, and your holiness is guarded by the cherubim, and yet you hear our cries. You are near to the lowly. You are quick to battle for the orphan and for the widow, and yet you reign over comets and crises with perfect wisdom and great patience. Lord, we pray for the church wherever she's gathered. Even as we learn in 1 Corinthians, as we're going through this series, that, that, that we are a local entity of a, a universal and eternal people. We want to put that to action, and we want to pray for the church in China. We pray that she may have the strength to endure, that she may have the courage to maintain her witness. We pray that she might be comforted. Uh, in her tribulation, and that in the end we might all rejoice in her victory over that dragon, the Communist Party in China. And Father, we pray for the church in Morelia, Mexico, where our brother Juan has been placed for the advance of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for, for, for his desire to plant a new church. We thank you for the church that he has planted at, at Sion Church. Father, we pray that you would strengthen them by your spirit as they stand witness against the predominantly syncretistic Catholic culture. We pray that they would be winsome and compelling. We pray for Juan and his family, Lord. We pray that you would strengthen them by your spirit according to your mighty word. Father, we pray for his little girls, Lord, that they, they would turn to Christ at a young age and they would avoid much of the destructive power of sin. Father, be with Juan as he teaches us this morning, as he speaks of what's being done through Noe International. We pray that you would grant him the grace to exalt Jesus and to proclaim his gospel. May we be transformed by it. May we love and labor for the mission of your church. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved, and we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, in whose face shines the radiance of your glory. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Juan Peralta. Uh, we support Juan and his work. Juan has, as I just prayed, Juan planted Sion Church. Uh, and he has a d deep desire, he, he currently pastors there, he has a deep desire to, uh, uh, in the near future, plant another church. But he's also the executive director of Noe International, where they parlay educational help into uh, gospel work. And they share Christ 
uh, with people as, as so often in the past, mission work has uh, gone tandem with education because people need to read God's word. And so we're, we're grateful for Juan and, and the work he does. He is husband to, uh, I, I'm going to ruin these names because I'm, I'm just a Gentile. Uh, we're, uh, uh, Melissa is his, his wife. Uh, he's father to uh, Valeria, Romina, and the newborn, Anna Julieta. Yes, okay. Got, got, got close to that. Uh, dear brother, uh, please come and bless us. Asa, you did a really good job. Very, very good. And, and when he was praying, it, it kind of like, I was going to ask him, man, you, you explained the context of uh, our situation in Mexico pretty, pretty well. So um, I don't know if he's been in Mexico or watching documentaries on Mexico or what's up with that. But yeah, it is our, it is our context. So um, I want to thank you for having us here. Like Asa said, my I have a newborn. She's uh, three months now, Ana Julieta, the little baby in that picture, uh, she's been a big, big blessing for us. She's also been uh, challenging for us because when she was born, we found out that she had Down syndrome, and we were not aware of this until she was born. So um, the first month was really painful for us, but now the love that we feel for her, it's overcoming that. So um, uh, that's my baby, Julieta, and we love her. And when she smiles, she just me- he, she, she can melt anybody's heart. Uh, then the, the one in the middle on the left is Romina. Romina and then my wife, Melissa. They couldn't be here with us for obvious reasons. But my oldest daughter, Valeria, <clears throat> Valeria is here with me. Valeria, can you stand up and say Hi. <laughs> It's been great having her uh, here with me, and uh, oh, I, I forgot my timer. Sorry, I gotta remember that. But uh, <clears throat> it is really good to be here. Uh, it feels like being at home. Um, so the first time I was here was actually in 2009, long, long time ago. And ever since then, um, uh, some of you might not know me, but I keep on coming, you know, because I really, really like what you guys are doing. I really like the hard behind Damascus and how there's so much integrity in this church. So um, thank you for doing that. Uh, Thank you for doing that. And I know that you guys have been studying the letters uh, to the church, churches in Corinthians and maybe some other uh, letters. But the one of the main things about letters, remember the good old days when you actually get letters on your mail? Yeah, weren't those good? It was like really, really special. It was so special for me that I have a a letter here. Actually, it's dated May 15, 2012. Long time ago. I still had hair back then. Uh, But it's actually a letter that I got from this church to congratulate me on my birthday. So this letter was really special for me. I'm not going to read it because it was, it's like a poem and it's like a lot of things that they put in it. But it's really, really, it was really, really a good gesture that it really touched my heart. So letters are always good to remind us how special we are, right? That's one of the purposes of the letters, communicate a message. Um, letters are also good to affirm us, um, show us love. But sometimes they're also good to direct us. Sometimes they're also good to correct things that might be going not so well in our lives. And I think that's, we can all agree that that's what we see on the letters of the New Testament, especially the ones of Paul. Um, His letters are for us to learn a lot of things so that when we as a church face tribulations or face conflicts, we know how to react and we have a guide to go to. And it is all pointing to Jesus Christ. I love so many things about Paul and his writing and his passion. But some of the most important things in my life has been that he was always encouraging people to do everything in order and with decency. Right? And that's something that we need to always be reminded of. Because sometimes we are in risk of putting that uh, besides as a church and try to please people and just entertain people. So it's always good good to go back to what Paul says. Um, 
the case of Corinthians, um, he makes a lot of uh, corrections and a lot of uh, things that he tells them. And it is not because um, they had a weak leadership or anything, because Paul himself, himself uh, was the one who preached there and shared there. But the context of Corinthians was really pagan, right? The context was it was a city where a lot of things happened. It was a city where um, there was a lot of uh, paganism and was infiltrating the church. So his card, his letter is telling you, you know, you got to go back to the basics. Go back to your faith. Go back and remember that the sound doctrine is to, that everything we do, everything we say, everything we communicate to the community around us points them not to a person, not to demonstrations of the power of God, not to emotions, but to Jesus Christ. And that is something that we need to keep reminding uh, ourselves as a church thousands of years after he's, he was re writing this letter, right? So there, his letters are still applicable to everything that we do. Um, he's always reminding us also that the church of Christ is Christ-centered and not self-centered, right? And sometimes it seems like there's a little, little thin line in between doing that, right? And sometimes as a Christians, we can be trapped in those and say like, it's all about me when it's not all about us. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about his mercy. It's all about his sacrifice. Uh, it's all about his grace, you know. Um, I'm, I'm really amazed of the way he was writing this because he wrote them with so many passion. Um, and he was always trying to make everybody be, be humble, right? Always saying like, hey, remember it's about Christ. My, even, even myself, like my life doesn't matter anymore. It's Christ in me that matters to, to everything. Uh, he was also echoing the words of Jesus in the Sermon of the Mountain, what Jesus said, blessed are the poor of spirit because they will inherit the kingdom of heaven, which means blessed are those who recognize their need for Christ before everything else. His love is enough. His grace is enough. His presence is enough. Right? And then I would like to read 1 Corinthians 3.9. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. And this is really amazing for me. Being from Mexico and being up here in Damascus preaching to you or sharing to you, knowing that the body of Christ is local, but it also goes beyond what we can imagine. It all goes to China. It goes to Mexico, Ecuador, Brazil, you know. Maybe some of us, like Paul was talking to Corinthians, are preparing the field. Maybe some of us are uh, adding some water, you know, to the seed. Maybe some of us are planting the seed. But we know that the growth belongs to God and only to God, right? It's not for us to take any glory or not for us to take any credit. It is all because of Him and it's all for Him. And that is where... Well, I think that our relationship between ministries, it's been so impactful. I don't know if you knew this, but the gospel in Mexico has been there for around 120 years, more or less. And it's always been through missionaries from the States. So through all these years, you guys have been really faithful to send missionaries and like the Barnabas uh, team that was here. Like, that's amazing what you guys are doing. Keep on doing it, you know. Uh, I think that for so many years, Mexico has been a missionary field. But now I think that my, our mission for this generation and my burden is to turn it into a missionary force also, right? And we still need you for that. We want, now, so now we want to be walking right next to each other, shoulder to shoulder, looking at the same, same future, sharing the gospel of Christ, sharing the good news that our King is alive and he reigns in our hearts. Um, so our church, it's actually, your church and, and our ministry is actually a really good example of that. You know, because through the years, you have been faithful. We still haven't gotten uh, an official team from Damascus to go. So I don't know. I don't know if we can work something out with the pastor maybe. It's like, hey, Andy, come on, man. Uh, but there is uh, a lot of things that we can still learn. And also a lot of things that you can still learn from being in the mission field down in Mexico, uh, it's completely safe. I can I can attest of that. The good is really really food. The weather, 
I gotta say it's good, you know? It's not that I don't like the rain and the cold, but our weather, it's, uh, it's really, really good. So if we can put the next slide. This is, um, I, like uh, Asa said, I work for Noe International, and uh, I say that I work, but it's my passion. It's where my heart is. Um, and this is a, a place that I actually was a student there. 22 years ago, I was a student there, and uh, it just transformed my life. I had the opportunity to um, go and experience love like I have never experienced it before. And that was because the teachers and all the staff there were really, really sharing the love of God uh, with us in a really uh, amazing way. So uh, NOAA stands for New Opportunities in Education, and that is exactly what I got from it. It was a new opportunity for me to improve my education. Um, we're opening doors and bringing hope to lots of communities. Um, I want to say thousands of people in, in Mexico City. Mexi uh, Mexico and Michoacán. Sorry, my state is Michoacán. Um, so Mexico, like I said, it's a really cool country. It's really uh, warm people, um, you know, really loving people. But we have some problems. Just like every country has different problems, our, one of our biggest problems is the lack of opportunities. You know, the lack of opportunities impacting us in our educational system. You know, I don't know if you knew, but less than 20% of the low-income families in Mexico, when they send their kids to either elementary, high school, or junior high, actually graduate from, from their studies. Then if you go to the college age for public system education in Mexico, it gets even worse. Only 8% actually graduate. And then once they're out of college, it's even worse because only 40% of them are actually going to secure a job uh, working in what they studied for. So the next one, please. So the Mexico's education system is really, really basic. Um, all the extracurricular activities, all the fun activities, all the, the ones that increase the self-esteem and character on the kids like art, sports, uh, language, uh, all of those activities are not offered in a public uh, system school. So uh, my daughter is actually going to public school, and that's, this is the situation with her. She goes only for like three days, three hours a day, and then she comes back. So she's studying the basics, and then it turns into a really big cycle, right? There is no growth, no hope. No hope, no growth. And it's, it goes right like that, and it's really, really aggressive, and it gets into the minds of people. So there's some people who's like, why would I worry about like studying if I know that my future is not going to be guaranteed with that? So that's when we come into the community and break that cycle. When Noé comes into the community, the next slide, please, uh, <clears throat> things change drastically. 180-degree uh, um, change. 80% of our students that go into any of our programs actually graduate from either elementary, high school, junior high, or even college uh, age, you know? So it is really something that is transforming the people, uh, people's lives in really, really different ways. Uh, and for us, the education, meeting that need, yeah, bringing hope to, to people, bringing good education, it's really important because it's, it opens the door for us to talk about Christ. Because we're actually not only saying that we care about them, we're actually doing something to prove them that we care about them, right? Um, you might be wondering, like, is this all free for our students? Um, the, the answer is no. You know? We found out that sometimes when you do things for free, people tend not to appreciate them as much. You know? So they come and they pay a little fee. Um, and even though it's really little, there's a lot of families who can't still really, really afford it. But it is a good way for us to commit with their parents, you know. And uh, it's like you, you guys have an item that is really, really uh, funny to me. They have some skin in the game, you know. That's a, that's a really good one. But I, uh, that's, that's what they come. So when they come and they don't, uh, they don't have money to pay or like we're always like, uh, I think Andy or Aisa was mentioning, we're always caring about the widows and we're always caring about the orphans. So when we have, uh, know there's a widow in, the, in, in, our, in our community, we always offer extra support and extra help for them. Uh, when we're somebody, somebody lost their jobs or something like that, we're always going to say like, hey, what, how, can we, how can we help you? you know? So this has been a really successful ministry over 32 years. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we actually have four in-person centers. 
and one center that it's online. After COVID, some people wanted to still come take classes, but they wanted to do it online. So uh, we're serving around 1,200 people every week in these four centers. Uh, and we have, uh, I'm going to mention them, Noe Primero, it's been there for 32 years ago. Noe Loma Libre, it's been there for 10 years. Noe Madero has been there for six years. And Noe del Monte has been there for only seven months. It's our baby. Yeah. Um, so I'm on the next slide, uh, you're going to see the picture of the four centers. And every center is really different. Same DNA, but really different context, really different situation. The next one, please. Uh, our first center, Noe Primero, uh, even though it's been there for 32 years, we were renting the place for 28 years. And then we were able to buy the place, and then we remodeled the place. And then at the end, we found out that we were still not giving a, an, ef, uh, an efficient solution to our problem. We were still saying no to people because we don't have more room. So God has been opening doors um, incredibly in, for us and Noe, so much that we were able to buy the building next door, and we're actually remodeling that so we can fit more people in, in that center. So this center alone is like hosting almost 500 people through the week. Uh, and... People, when they come to Noé, they come when they're in elementary school. But we have elementary, junior high, high school, adults programs for all the family and all the community. You know, so it has been really, really a good opportunity for us. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, we love it when teams come and help us uh, build, you know. You got to love that cheap American labor. <laughs> So no, any, uh, seriously though, no. like we love it when we have uh, teams that come and help us and they partner with us. Um, we, we've ha had two teams that have come and help us uh, build and we were going to have a team that was going to come and help us paint and they canceled on us like two weeks ago. So if you're not doing anything in the next couple of months, talk to Andy. <laughs> Thanks Andy. We didn't talk about this before, but um. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably not going to invite me anymore, but it's like, okay, you know, so it's worth a try. So anyways, uh, we like it because it's like, um, um, you know, something we really look up to you and admire to is like, so how passionate you are uh, to work and do things the right way. And that's something that we uh, actually teach to our kids in, in Noe. It's been a really good marriage in between the States and Noe. So we bring all the warmth and all the, you know, the tacos and the, all, all of that. And then the part of um, like discipline, being on time, teaching all those values to our kids, it's really, really important. You know, stay away as much as we can from corruption. All of that, it's been really, really good. So it has been really uh, a good place to, to work and to minister to people. And next one, please. <clears throat> and now I'm going to talk about our baby, Jesus Noé del Monte. Um, I was uh, having coffee one day in my office, and the executive pastor of a local church, that it's a bigger church uh, in Morelia, called me and said, Hey, Juan, so we were donated this land in the outskirts of Morelia in the rural communities. Uh, and we're thinking that God has uh, placed on our heart to build a private Christian university there, the first one in our state, Right. And I was like, man, that's so, that's so great. Uh, God bless you guys for doing that. Yeah, and he said, well, the thing is that it's going to be private, so it's probably not going to bless the community because they're not going to have money to come. But how would you feel if we uh, let you use our facilities and you can come and bless the community with your programs? And my answer was, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> I don't know if that's a fair question anymore, but anyways. Uh, so I told them, of course, man, like we, we want to do it. We want to serve. So we went and looked at the property and we started going and we would uh, take clothing and food because a lot of people there have like pretty much nothing, right? Uh, so people would, would start coming and uh, we started, um, if you see the picture in the middle, we bought some tents and we got some chairs and tables and that's where we were teaching the classes. And then the rainy season came. You know, and then it started like blowing the tents and like it was too cold. Next slide, please. Uh, we don't, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have, uh, we only had one bathroom for all of our students. Uh, and the transportation was even a challenge because even though it's in the outskirts of, uh, like it's, it's also in the outskirts of that rural community. So people had to walk or people had to, um, take their cars or some people even have to take their donkeys or their horses because it's so rural that that's, that's still the way they, they live down there. But I, I love the, 
the attitude of the community because when you talk to the parents, they were saying like, "Thank you for coming." We, I, um, one guy was the the guy in the donkey was taking one of his kids, and then he was like, "I'm gonna go and bring the other one," because we I, we never had an opportunity like this. So now that we have it here, we gotta take advantage of it. So I was like, "Please do." So after being the, here, we had to move to a second location, uh, and this is the next slide, please. So the second location is uh, it was. A little better, you know, it was actually in the community, so the wind and all of those things were not a, a big problem, but we still had, didn't have classrooms, some, some kids were taking their classes on the, on the grass, basically, um, which, I mean, honestly, we love, you know, like, it's just like being right there in the nature, but we know, we knew that, uh, we needed, we could do better, so, this, the community started talking to us about a building in the community that belonged to the government, and you know how working with the government can be in Mexico, not here, only in Mexico. Uh, so we, we went and talked to them and we went back and forth, back and forth. And then they finally, can you put the next slide, please? They finally said, uh, they, well, we have this clinic in the rural community and we're only using it in the morning and we're only using half. So why don't you guys use the other half and we're going to give it to you rent free, utilities free. You just got to keep it clean, right? So the community was really excited, so excited that they came and we worked for a day. They all came and they helped us clean it. They actually the ones who uh, help us uh, take care take care of it. And um, it's been a big, big blessing. The day that we had the inauguration, um, there was a census by the government going on in the, in the community. And there was a guy from a government uniform and he, I was like, oh man, I hope he's not coming here. And he was coming right, right to us. Uh, so he said, hey, can I do some questions? I ask you some questions. I was like, no, <laughs> today is not a good day for that. But yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. So um, I told him, you know what? We're about to, we, we were in like an inauguration. We we're going to cut a ribbon. So I was like, we, we're about to start this. Can you wait a little? And I was really hoping he would say like, I'll come tomorrow. But he said like, no, I'll wait. I'll wait and I see everything that you guys are going to do. So I was like, man. And we just prayed and said, okay, Lord, whatever, whatever you're going to uh, want to do with this. So um, my concern is that we were going to, of, of course, pray and, of course, sing a song. And then I didn't want him to go and say, hey, these guys are using this for not a, not a good re uh, reason. So he actually stayed. And then at the end, I went up to him and I was like, okay, uh, he's probably going to say something. But, you know, you know, Lord, it's, it's all you. So I went up to him. And when I was coming up to him, he bent over like this. And I was like, what is he doing? And then it looks like he was going to vomit, you know. And then I came near and I was like, are you okay? And then he uh, went like this and he was crying, like sobbing. And I was like, oh, man, like, are you okay? And he's like, no, I'm not okay. I, this morning I woke up hating my job and hating my life. And I see what you guys are doing for these kids that don't have anything. And I was just really touched. And it made me feel like, what are you think? What are you doing? So um, he gave us the opportunity to pray for him. And he, we pointed him to a local church. But it was just like God telling me. And he was like, I got this, man. You know, like, don't, you don't have to worry. My presence, my love is enough. So it's going to be, it's going to be okay. And we have a lot of, uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, next one, please. Uh, the director of Jesus del Monte is a former student of Noé. I'm also a former student. 80% of our staff is actually former student because once you go through the program, you, you, I mean, you just say like, how can I help? What can I do for, for this ministry to keep on growing? Uh, so the director of uh, Noé is actually a biotechnology engineer and he was working for a, for a company in Mexico. Uh, he was making good money uh, and then... God came in the picture and changed everything. One time I was having coffee with him and I told him, you know what, there's an opportunity for us uh, to open this center up in the rural communities. And I know God has just put you in my mind and in my heart. What do you think? And he also said, is the Pope Catholic? He jumped into the idea and uh, he's actually with me today. Brandon, would you stand up and say hi to everybody? So... It is just uh, so amazing to see the power of God in action. Um, you know, just transforming not only the minds of people, but the hearts of the people um, in the urban communities, in the rural communities, and everywhere, everywhere we go. Next slide, please. 
This is a, a picture of a typical cemetery in Mexico. Really picturesque, lots of flowers. Uh, you know, uh, Day of the Dead is really, really big in Mexico. They even made a movie, uh, uh, Coco or something like that, it's called, uh, from Disney. And it's actually based on our state, you know, because it's, it is so big. Uh, and like Asa was saying, the syncretism with the, with the, the paganism has really infiltrated the tradition of church in, in Mexico. But we're there to make the difference. But what I wanted to mention about this picture, it is, it, this is a cemetery that is really close to Del Monte. And one time I was meditating and I was thinking, you know, I bet that if I went and walked, I would see graves with uh, names and ages of all different people. Little kid, uh, young adults, adults, older people. The sad thing about this is to think that a lot of those kids didn't get to go to school. A lot of, and there was a lot of books that were not written, a lot of trips that were not uh, made, a lot of dreams that were not, did, didn't come true because of the lack of opportunities. The saddest part about this is that we don't even know whether we're spending eternity, right? So for us to come into the communities, it is, that's, that's, that's our passion and that's our heart. Can you play the next one, please? Um, when Gnoi comes into a community, it goes from hopelessness to Jesus. If you see this picture on the left, uh, it's Marisol, Senora Marisol and her son, Omali. Um, this lady was a lady that was coming to our activities when we were giving out food and clothing. And she looked a little suspicious because we were there with some uh, gringos. I shouldn't say gringos. Americans, sorry. Uh, but uh, so we were there pray, uh, praying for people. And then she came up to us and was like, what are you guys doing here? Why are you here? Well, you know, there's something here that it, it's fishy for me. So we told her, no, this is why we're here. We're going to open a a center and then uh, bring education and then once again this lady started like crying like really really deep and I asked her like are you okay and she's like ah, no I so I have had a really rough life I lost to a daughter to, can to cancer and then my husband and cheating on me and then I'm so sad and I, I so she was wearing this hoodie that you can see and she went like this and she had marks on her neck she's like last night I was just ready to take my life because I don't want to pass my sadness into my in my son, and I don't I don't think he's gonna 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 have a good life. And but but she said, th this is what surprises us. She said, but now that you guys are offering this, uh, I think that we're gonna be good. What do you guys need to start? Do you need a place? You come come and start it in my house. And we're like, well, we need a little bit more than the house, you know. But uh, uh, now she's really involved. She's one of the ladies who come and cleans the the. The, the center she actually cooks uh, lunch for the teachers every friday you know for free so i'm there every friday of course just to enjoy that uh she's actually started coming to church she's reading uh, join a, a bible study and she's start thinking about getting getting baptized so next one please so through education we're able to share the gospel through equipping people we're able to share the gospel. It sink into us when, when we talk to them about having a personal relationship with Christ. It's like, oh yeah, that's what the way you have been communicating with me. So I, I, I think there, there might be a way for me to have a personal relationship with Christ. No international, it's all about ministry. So we have, uh, the extracurricular activities, the classes, you know, English classes, art, sports, but we also have kids clubs, youth groups, Bible studies parenting classes, youth retreats, you name it. We, we want to do it all. We want to uh, take any opportunity we have to keep on sharing the gospel and to bring hope into those families. Um, and I'm, I want to close with this. The next slide, please. Uh, these are three of our students at Del Monte. You see the, the guy on the, on the right with that big smile. Yeah. His name is Manuel. He's 23 and he's mentally delayed. He has the mind of a 10-year-old. Um, he works every morning to provide for his house. He's got two brothers that are into drugs, so they don't provide anything to the house. So he works in the morning, really early in the mornings, and then we open our centers at four for the classes in the evening. And then <clears throat> every day that we're going to open, he wants to come and help, uh, know how to read and write and do math because he loves that. So he comes and he waits there two hours before we open the center just so that he can be there and that he can feel loved because that's, that's what we communicate with him. The girl in the middle, her name is Daniela, and she's uh, got lupus, cancer in her blood. Um, she hates going to public school because kids make fun of her there. But she loves coming to Noé because she knows that she's loved there. 
her mom is so grateful to Noe that she said, you know what, next trimester when you start classes, I would like to teach a class for free. I would like to teach people how to care, uh, care, cut hair and do nails and stuff like that uh, because I'm so grateful and the only way that I can uh, pay you back is with, with what I know how to do. So we're actually going to open our, our class. You know? uh, and the one in the, in the last one, uh, her name is Daniela, no, Janet, sorry. Uh, she lost her dad three weeks ago. And it was really sad because her mom came to her and said, you know what, Nani, you're going to have to, Janet, sorry, you're going to have to drop off your school. You're going to have to quit going to Noe because now that your dad is dead, I have to go work uh, to provide for our family and you have to stay home and take care of your uh, brothers and sisters. So we're actually helping them with some food boxes so that he, she can keep on coming to, to Noe del Monte and she's still coming to Noe del Monte. So um, our journey is... It's filled with uh, challenges, you know, it's filled with obstacles, but thank you to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the relationship that we have with um, solid and stable churches like you, we've been able to, to survive and we've been able to keep on preaching the gospel. The last slide, please. I'd like to close with uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers from Damascus and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord, it's not in vain. We love you, and uh, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you so much for everything that, that you do. You're an amazing body of Christ, amazing body of believers. Keep the good work. Okay? Let me pray. Dios, te damos tantas gracias, Señor, porque tú eres bueno. Gracias porque podemos sentir tu presencia en este lugar. Thank you so much for Damascus. Thank you so much because I know that there's the, a, a, a light in the darkness here in this area. Maybe different obstacles, different problems, but we worship the same Lord. Jesus, thank you so much for your sacrifice. Thank you so much for making us co-workers of your kingdom. Thank you so much for opening doors for us. Thank you so much for using us as your servants to deliver the good news that you are alive, that our king is alive, and that he reigns. I want to thank you for this church and for every family that it is here represented. I pray that your spirit will be with them this week and that your biggest letter of love, your word, the Bible, can show them your love, can let them know that your grace is enough, direct them, maybe sometimes correct them, and affirm them in you. Thank you so much for their work er, and for their openness to having us here. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.